Eyewitness News continues tracking Rhode Island's recovery from the historic floods. Twenty homeowners whose properties were damaged last spring want the federal government to buy them out. If approved, the homes will be completely demolished. Eyewitness News reporter Catherine Sotnick joins us now with details live in West Warwick with the West Bay Mobile Newsroom. Well, Karen, some of those houses are here in the Natick section of West Warwick. Others are in the Clyde section. And you can see actually a vacant house here behind me. There's many others like it right nearby. The homes potentially, we're told, will be raised and the land potentially turned back into floodplains. Months after the historic flooding, homes in the Natick section of West Warwick remain vacant, junked, and dilapidated. And for people like Chris Whittier, who lives there, he wishes something would be done. Everything's abandoned. <laughs> Actually, I thought I caught a homeless guy living in this house uh, a month ago and called the cops. Now the town is applying for $1.5 million in federal funding to pay for the demolition of homes and businesses damaged by the flooding. The way this plan works, it goes back to the pre-flood. Whatever your home was appraised at pre-flood. If they want to uh, level some of these houses, it would be better than letting them sit here and fester. It is a voluntary buyout, and the vacant land will go back to being floodplains for the Patuxent River. But town manager Jim Thomas says it's not all cut and dry, and the town would lose tax dollars from the homes. This property will come off the tax rolls. It will never again ever be developable. And some residents say it's a little too late. I already rebuilt the home now. I'm living in it. I've been living in it for two weeks. Why am I going to sell it now? So the money tonight is not a guarantee and the town should be uh, aware if they're getting that federal funding on Friday, we're told. Reporting live with the West Bay Mobile Newsroom from West Warwick, I'm Catherine Sotnik, Eyewitness News.